Hi everyone! In this video, I will show you how to write better switch expressions that have multiple cases with the same result. You will see how to reduce the number of code lines for the switch statement and also make your code more readable. In my opinion, the ways I will present in this video significantly impact better code readability. So, let's see what we can do. In an ordinary switch statement, as you can see here, we can combine multiple case blocks by omitting breaks to return the same result. Even now, with these few cases, this doesn't look that great. But imagine if I had even more cases for a single result and also even more case blocks for this switch statement. Well, that would be hard to read for sure. And also, it would require a lot more code lines to cover all the cases inside the expression. That said, let's improve this code. Just before I do that, I want to remind you about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book, which you can find linked in the description below. Feel free to check out the book if you want to master all the best practices to create powerful and production ready web APIs. And also, check out our Blazor course to create client C -sharp apps without using JavaScript. Again, the links are in the description below. Now, let's continue. While creating a switch expression with multiple cases, I can use the when keyword combined with relational and logical operators to specify a condition inside the case block. So let's add a new method here named multiple case results with when and provide a single int number parameter. Then, as in the previous method, I will have a string result variable and then create a switch expression checking the number parameter. Now, instead of multiple case blocks, I can use a single case block here and declare a local int n variable that will have the value of the number parameter I am checking right now. Then, I can use the when keyword and specify my condition. So, let's say when n is greater than or equal to 20 and n is less than or equal to 22. In this case, I can assign a message that the number is between 20 and 22 to the result variable. And let's add the break here. You can already see that this looks better than the previous one. Of course, I have to add same for the next case. So again, I need a temporary n variable and I can specify the condition using the when keyword. And here I will say that n must be greater than or equal to 30 and n must be less than or equal to 32. In this case, I will assign a new message to the result variable and let's add break here. Finally, for the default case, I will just say that the result is not in the required range and use the break keyword. After the switch statement is done, I can simply print the result. So, now when you compare these two methods, you can already see that this one has fewer code lines for the same logic and is easier to read. Especially, this would be the case if I had even more cases for each condition. Now, let's see how we can improve this code as well. For that, I will use a great pattern matching c -sharp feature and combine different patterns and extension methods to make the code even better. So, up until now, we have been working only with the int type. But I can make this solution even more reusable and for that I will create an extension method to help me with the process. So as you can see, I already have a class created. And inside, let's add a new extension method. It must be static of course. And it will return a bool type. I will name the method in and it will have one generic type parameter. Now, since this is an extension method, I need to extend this t type and let's name it value. And also, this method accepts a single parameter. And for that, I will use the params keyword. And this parameter will be of the t array type named values. For the method's body, I will simply say values.contains value. So basically, if I find the value inside the values array, I will return true. Otherwise, this method will return false. 
Now, let's get back to the program class and create another method here. I will name the method multiple case with extension. And this method will accept a single int number parameter. Inside the body of the method, I will create a new result variable. And then I will use the switch expression syntax where number is the variable whose value we are switching on. Since I'm using pattern matching here, I don't need the keys keyword for different cases. What I need here is to create a new x private variable and then use the when keyword. And since x is of the int type, I can use my in extension method and provide the range of integer numbers for the array parameter. If this returns true, I can assign a correct message to the result variable. Now, I can do the same for the second case and I can call my extension in method and provide the required numbers as an array parameter. Of course, if this returns true, I will assign a new string to the result variable. Finally, I don't even need the default keyword here. I will just use an underscore for the default condition and if we reach this point, I'll just return the number is not in range. That's it. After the switch expression, I can simply print the result variable. So, as you can see, this is definitely more readable and pattern matching allows us to create better switch statements with fewer lines of code. Now, this code looks great and quite readable. And we can reuse the extension method for different types like strings, decimals, doubles. We don't have to work only with integers. But from c 9, we don't even have to create an extension method to have a similar logic. We can combine pattern matching with logical and relational patterns. Well, let's see how we can do that with a logical pattern first. So I need a new method and let's name it multiple case logical pattern. And it will also accept a single int number. Now, as in the previous example, I will use a pattern matching expression to check the value of the number variable and return the result to the result variable. Here, I can use the OR keyword to specify if the value of the number parameter matches any of these given numbers. I want to return an appropriate message. So, let's do the same for the second condition. Just of course, I will use different numbers and assign a different message to the result variable. Of course, for the default condition, I will use not in range message as a result. Finally, I can print the result. Now, if I compare these two methods, I can say that this last one reads even better, but I believe it is a personal preference on what someone considers more readable and easier to understand. For me, since a logical pattern can work with different types as well, which means I can use strings here, for example, this is always a way to go for me. With this done, I can't finish the video without covering the relational pattern as well. So, let's simply paste the code here as it is almost the same as the previous one. Here, you can see that instead of using the logical pattern with the OR keyword, I'm using a relational pattern with relational operators. It also looks great and easy to read. That said, I would really like to hear what you find as the best option from given ones. Or if you use any other technique for writing your switch statements. You can always share your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, all I have to do is to call each of these methods and run the app. As you can see, I have the correct results for each method. So, at this point, I can finish the video. Thank you for watching and I see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.